Hello, welcome to Katrina's Creations. Today's tutorial is going to be on joining yarns and on weaving ends in. And this was a requested video. And the techniques I'm going to show will work for knitting or for crochet. Although with crocheting, so many of the times you just incorporate the yarn into the crocheting as you are crocheting across. So you don't have as many ends to weave in as you would with knitting. Um, however, all of these techniques techniques can be applied to both. So I hope you find it helpful. Thanks for watching. There are a couple different ways to weave in your ends. So I'm going to show the two that I use the most. Um, the first one would be using a darning needle or embroidery needle, whichever has a, a, a large eye on the end. And you just simply take your ends and I'm going to get this close so you can see it. You try to follow the trail of the stitch itself. If you can weave into a garter bump, which is what this is, or garter ridge, that is the easiest. Uh, it's the least likely to show. And I try to do it on the wrong side of my work. So this is actually the right side of the work. So let me turn it around. Here's the wrong side of my work. Now I'm going to go through this little first stitch and you try to blend it so that the yarn you're weaving in is being blended into the yarn that is here of the same color. You don't, in other words, I wouldn't want to put this into the gray. It would show up. So if you see up close here, I've gone through one and now I'm going to follow the little trail and come up through the next. Again, following the line of the stitches. You can kind of see what I've done right here. It just Instead of having a dotted line like this, it just creates a solid line. And you're going to continue this until you run out of your yarn. Now some people also, another way of doing this same technique, they actually open up the ply of the yarn. Like this is a three ply. They open up the plies and they do the same thing but they might take all three of these plies and have them go in a different direction, like maybe in this stripe and down into this stripe, using the same technique, but that way they don't have as bulky of an edge here. Um, this isn't going to be a side that people are going to see in this particular garment, so I'm not overly worried about it being that noticeable. Um, so that is technique number one. Technique number two is doing the exact same thing, but instead of using a needle, I use a crochet hook. And again, you're going to go down up through this stitch here and pull the yarn through. And then I'm going to go in the opposite direction and weave the yarn through back and forth. like that. So that is how you weave in, or this is how I weave in ends. It's not by any means the only ways to do it. This is just the two that I do. Of the two, I tend to prefer the crochet hook. Now we're going to talk about different ways of joining yarn. There are quite a few different ways. If you are in the middle of a project and you are changing colors, there are numerous ways you can do it. Uh, the first way is simply to tie it off, tie on your new color. Like this. And 
proceed knitting, just changing your color, cut the old yarn that you're finished with, and then just pick this one up and continue knitting, and then at the end weave in, which is what's happened here. It does create a little knot right here, but it's on the edge of my work, so it's really not that noticeable. If it was in the middle of my work, like over here where I've got stockinette stitches, I would probably not do it that way because then you would end up with a bump in the middle of your work. But if it's on the end here, like I said, it's not so noticeable that, I mean, you can't even really feel it. So that's what I would do if I'm on the end. If I'm in the middle of a row and I'm going to be changing colors. There are several different ways you can do it. You can overlap your yarn, which means you would take the new color that you're using, you would fold the yarn in half like this, you would take the yarn that you are going to be cutting, leave a tail, so here's the yarn I'm cutting, thread it through this, so that it's interlocked like this. They're not tied on either end. And then you would proceed to knit and you would actually knit this loop into it. So let me show you what that would look like. Here I'm getting ready to knit it in, so I'm going to have these two, this end here, it's going to get wrapped around. Both, both of the strands are wrapped at this point, and I'm just going to continue knitting with those two strands. And here you can see where I've got the join. Again, I'm holding the two strands together. And there I've changed the color. Now when you come back on this next row, you're going to want to make sure that you pick up both of these stitches as just one. You're going to knit them as one stitch. Now if you're crocheting, you would do the same thing. This this technique would apply to both knitting and for crocheting. The next technique is just simply taking your two yarns, holding them together where you're going to join them, Loosely tie in a knot, not tight, because you're going to pull this back out. You can even tie it as a small, uh, just like one time through. You're not going to make a double knot out of this. And you do not want this to be a tight knit, or a tight knot. So here I've just got it loose. Then you're going to continue knitting or crocheting. And when you get to this knot, you will just slip to the next color, which would be this. So when you finish your work, this would be hanging in the back. Let me show you what that would look like. Here I'm coming up to that knot. I'm going to wrap the cream color one more time and then I'm just going to transfer to the rust color. So I've changed colors here and then you can see here I've got this big knot with the yarn hanging in the back. What you would do is when you finish your project you would just untie this knot and then weave the ends in and then that way your colors have been taken care of, you've, you've kept your same tension, and you just unknot it and weave in those ends. Another method of joining yarns is called the magic knot. 
So let me show you how to do that. You have one yarn here. Here's your other yarn. I'm going to lay them like this so you can see them. Like this. You're going to take this end here and you're going to tie it one time, not as a double knot, but just one time around the other yarn. Like that. And then you're going to take the red yarn and tie it one time around the cream. Again, not as a double knot, just as a simple loop around, pull it snug. So now you have the red tied to the cream and the cream tied to the red. Now you grab both ends and you pull. Now your knots have joined and you want to give it a real good pull. And then you simply clip off the excess yarn. And there it is. It's not going anywhere. And you do have a knot, but it's a small knot. And there's nothing left to weave in. So that is a magic knot. Now the next last technique that we have is called a spit join. Now, llama spit people don't. Well, some people do, but we're not going to spit because who wants to receive a gift where you go, here, I made this for you. It's covered in my saliva and DNA. <laughs> You're welcome. I know where that gift is gonna end up. We don't wanna do that. So instead, we are going to do what is called a spit join that's non-spit. Now, in order to do that, you must have 100% wool and it cannot be superwash. It must be just wool, like a Peruvian Highland wool. It can be any kind of wool, but it must be just wool. All right. I have one end of yarn here and another end here, and I'm going to join these. First thing you want to do is Separate the plies on the yarn. So here you can see I've kind of pulled that one apart a little bit. And I'm going to pull this one apart just a little bit. All right, you can see that I have split open the plies. You're now going to kind of lay them over top of each other, just kind of intersperse them a little bit, like that. And now you're going to add some water. You do not need much, maybe a half a teaspoon. Just enough to get them slightly damp. Then you're going to put them between your palms and you're going to rub it back and forth. The friction is going to actually felt the wool together. And that's what's going to create your spit, in our case, non-spit join. And there you go. So I hope you found this felt helpful. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching.